one. Fine. Now this is a question where you prepare the purchases day book and the purchases returns day book, right? Along with the double entry for the payments that you make for your suppliers, for your credit suppliers. Is it very clear? Right. So here, uh, first of Jan 2006 balances are given. So purchases account balance, Alan a trade payable account, Mary a trade payable account, and uh, this should be purchases returns. And the purchases returns account value is given as three thousand. Right. Next step is to identify by reading the transaction where exactly you're going to transfer the information to. The first information is 10th, 10th Jan 2006, purchase goods on credit from Allen 2000, subject to a 10% trade discount. So here, this information would go to the purchaser's day book. And the second one, 15th, returned goods to Allen worth 400. This will move to purchaser's return day book. And the next one, paid outstanding, as at 1 1 2006 by check to marry with a cash discount. So this will go to the cash book. And next one, 21st, purchase goods on credit from Mary 2500, subject to a 5% trade discount, will move to purchaser's day book. And the next one, return goods worth 100 to Mary, will move to purchaser's returns day book. And the last one, Pay the outstanding as at 1 1 2006 by check to Alan with a cash discount 10% will move to cash book. So let's highlight each of them with different colors to identify where exactly it moves to. So purchases day book values, I'm highlighting it with yellow. And purchases returns a different color. Now you know where exactly you have to transfer this information to. Is it very clear? Before moving into the double entry, we need to prepare the purchaser's day book and the purchaser's returns day book. Okay. Now let's prepare the purchaser's day book, the information which appears in yellow, the 10th transaction as well as the 21st transaction should move to the purchaser's Day book. So now let's prepare the purchaser's day book. The first information date is on 10. So enter the information over here 10 1 2006. And in the detail column, the trade payable's name, which is Alan, worth of 2000, subject to 10% trade discount. So, Alan, worth of 2000. Now, let's calculate the trade discount. Which is 2000 times 10% is the trade discount value. Which gives a value of? Which gives a value of? Let's see how to calculate this. Two thousand into ten percent, which is two hundred. So let's write that within bracket two hundred. And then transfer the difference of this information to next column, next line. 2000 take away 200, which gives an answer of 1800. Okay. The first entry is done. Let's move into the entry which is on 21st to Mary. The 21st, 1, 2006. And the 
trade payable is mainly. And what is the value? Which is 2500, 5% trade discount. So let's enter 2500. And we need to calculate trade discount. For 2500, calculate 5%. Let's do the calculation. 2500 into 5 divided by 100, which gives an answer of 125. So write this within bracket 125. Now you need to take the difference between these two values and translate to the next column, next line. 2500 take away 125 which is 2375 2375 now it's time for the balancing you need to total up the figures over here which is 1800 plus 2375 4175. 4175 is the total amount of credit purchases. And then you enter over here transferred to general list. Okay. Now let's prepare the purchases returns table. The information which appears on 15th and on 25th. So let's transfer the 15th information. Return goods to Allen worth 400. So this should be transferred to the purchaser's returns daybook. So the date is on 15th. And you returned goods to Allen. And the value of goods, 400. Now, in this case, the trade discount percentage is not given. However, you can see when you made credit purchases from Allen, you adjusted for trade discount of 10%. So, this same percentage will be used when you are returning goods to Allen. So, you will adjust for the same trade discount of 10%. And the value of the returns, 400. 400 times 10 over 100 will give an answer of 40. Now, you find the difference between 400 and 40 which will be 360. 15th transaction is done. Now the 25th transaction. Return goods worth 100 to Mary. So this is on 25th. Enter the date. This is on 25th. Then 2006. And you returned goods to Mary and the worth of goods that you returned 100. Now, here also the information of trade discount is not disclosed. You will take the information from where? From the purchaser's day book. Whatever the trade discount was applicable there will be for purchaser's returns. So, it's 100 worth of goods which is written. Now, you calculate 100 into 5 divided by 100, which gives 5. And then, you take the difference between 100 and then 5. You enter it in the next column, next line, worth of 95. Now, let's balance off this. 360 plus 95, 455. 
and for this we would write transfer to the general level. One. Let's identify the double entry of purchases. This is credit purchases. This is the purchases daybook or the journal. Okay, now it's time to identify the double entry of credit purchases. So the double entry would be purchases debit. 4,175 Allen trade table credit by 1,800 Mary credit by 2,375 Now let's post the entries Double entry for credit purchases For the end of the month 31st 106 Double entry would be purchases Account, debit and you debit the value by 4175 4175 and then you credit Alan to the account Credit and then Mary if you account credit by their individual figures Alan one thousand eight hundred Alan one thousand eight hundred And you credit Mary's account by two thousand three hundred and seventy five. Two thousand three hundred and seventy five. This would be the double entry for credit purchases. Okay. Now let's identify the double entry. For purchases returns. So this is the purchases returns playbook or the journal. Double entry would be Alan and Mary, you debit it. Alan GP, Mary GP. Need to debit these two accounts and then credit the purchases returns account. Credit the purchases returns account. Now let's see by what figure Alan three sixty Mary ninety five. These two accounts, CP account will be debited and then you credit it by 455. 455 to the purchases returns account. Now let's complete the transaction for 20th. Take the outstanding asset 11 2006 by check to Mary. With a cash discount of 5%. So let's see what is Mary's opening balance. Mary's opening balance is 1200. So in order to complete this, you need, uh, uh, we are paying it by check, therefore I'm writing it as bank and then as a discount received, as we receive discount from the supplier. Right. 
Now let's do the calculation. Uh, from 1200 is the total amount which we are supposed to pay and business is getting a 5% discount from Mary. So a 5% of cash discount that is 1200 take away. Let's see how much is 5% of 1200. Which gives a value of 60. Therefore, 1200 take away 60 would give an answer of 1140. So, this is the value by check we would pay. Now, in order to calculate the discount, in order to calculate the discount, we do the same process over here, which is 1200 into 5%, which gives an answer of 60. Therefore, in this case, the double entry would be Every account we would debit by 1200. Whereas you would credit the bank as you're paying it. You would credit the bank by 1140. And then you would credit the discounts received. Account, discount received account. Credit by so this would be the double entry when the payment is made for Mary. So let's post this entry to the relevant general journal. So I would write the date as 31st 1, 2006 and just paying it to Mary. So, Mary TP account debit and then you credit the bank account and then you credit the discount received account. Right. So, here you credit it. And here also, right. Now let's see by how much we are going to debit Mary's account. According to this calculation, Mary debit one thousand two hundred. So let's debit by one thousand two hundred, and then credit the bank by one thousand one hundred and forty by. 1140 and then credit the discount received by 60. Now we have posted the entry, double entry for paying the check. First step is to enter the opening balances of each of the ledgers. Before moving into this, you should know the normal balances of each of these accounts. Purchaser's account has a normal balance of debit. Allen Trade Payable account has a normal balance of credit. Mary Trade Payable account has a normal balance of credit. And last, purchases returns account has a normal balance of credit. Now, you're clear which side to enter each of these balances.
So first, let's enter the purchases account balance 15,000 on the debit side. So let's move to the purchases account on the debit side. The year beginning day 1106 and in the detail column as well brought down and the value is 15,000. Now let's move on to the next one. Allen trade payable account 2500 credit. So you move to the purchaser's ledger to Allen's account. On the credit side, you write 2500. So let's move into Allen's account. And on the credit side, on the purchaser's ledger in Allen's account, as 1106. That is brought down. What is the value? It's 2500. So let's enter 2500. Then the, then the next is to enter the Mary's opening balance. That will brought down on the credit side. The value is 1200 credit. So let's enter it on the credit side as 1200. And next is the purchaser's returns account. Worth of 3000 on the credit side. So move to purchaser's returns on the credit side as 1 1 2006 as bell brought down and the amount is 3000 so this would be the first step to complete okay once we are done with the opening balances now let's transfer all the information of the double entry As we identified before, the double entry for credit purchases would be purchases account debit 4175, Allen account credit 1800, Mary TP account credit 2375. So let's move into the purchases account and in the purchases account on the debit side, the month end date. And in the detail column, you would write total trade payables. And the value of the credit purchases 4175. 4175. Now, you move to the trade payable account. Allen account. It says Allen TP credit 1800. You go to Allen account. End of month date. And you write here credit purchases and you enter the value worth of 1800. Whereas in Mary's account on the credit side, 31st 106, credit purchases and the value of credit purchases would be 2375. 2375. Okay, now the next is the double entry for purchases returns. So, Allen account debit, Mary account debit, purchases returns credit. Let's move into Allen's account on the debit side. Again, it would be the month end date, and you would write here purchases returns. And what is the value of purchase returns? The value of purchase return for Allen would be 360. So let's debit 360 in Allen's account. And then in Mary's account, you need to debit by the same date as purchase return. And the value would be 95. Now, you move to purchases returns account. The date would be 31st. 106 as total trade payables and the total purchase returns would be 455. Now we are done with that. 
now we need to see the double entry for the payments made by by the firm to the trade payables so here i have shown an example okay it says on 20 20th we have made a payment to mary the outstanding which was on 1106 by check with a cash discount of 5% so the opening balance at the beginning of the year was 1200 the bank now let's focus on the 20th and the 30th transaction it says here paid the outstanding as at 11206 by check to mary with a cash discount of 5% let's see how to complete this so first you need to find what is the opening balance for mary the opening balance was 1200 at the beginning of the year then you should see how much you are paying by check and how much would be the discount received from your supplier so it's simple to calculate 1200 is the amount to owing at the beginning of the year take away open brackets 1200 into 5% is the cash discount so you calculate 5% 5 over 100 Therefore, one thousand two hundred take away sixty would give an answer of one thousand one hundred and forty. So this is the amount that the firm has paid by check to Mary. And then to calculate the discount received, discount received one thousand two hundred into five percent. So one thousand two hundred into five over hundred, which gives an answer of sixty. Now you should know the double entry for this. You debit Mary's account by one thousand two hundred because this is the amount you are supposed to pay to Mary, and you credit the bank by one thousand one hundred and forty, and then you credit the discount received account by sixty. This one thousand one hundred and forty and sixty gives a total of one thousand two hundred. So you are not paying the total amount of one thousand two hundred because the firm has received a cash discount of 60 so the rest will be paid by check which is worth of 1140 now let's see how to post this entry to the ledger so this will affect mary's account the double entry would be mary's account debit 1200 so you go to mary's account and the date was on 20th Let's go to Mary's account. Twenty one zero six was the day that you made the payment. You had paid by check as well as you have received discount. So discount received. Same date for discount received. And the amount of check that you pay would be one thousand one hundred and forty. so you debit the bank uh, you debit the mary's account the detail column bank as 1140 and then the discount received was only 60 so you write here 60 now you need to perform the double entry for this you have to credit the bank by 1140 and credit discount received by 60 So let's move into the general ledger. Under general ledger, bank. Move to the debit side of the bank. Sorry, credit side of the bank, and you will credit the bank by one thousand one hundred and forty. The date would be twenty one zero six, and here you would write Mary C P, and the value which is paid by check. Is one thousand one hundred and forty. 
Followed by this, he'll move into discount receipt. Same date, same information. And you would enter there as 60. This would be the double entry for check paid to Mary with a cash discount. Okay. Let's look at the second one. The transaction which happened on 30th. So in the question, you can see 30th. Paid the outstanding as at 1-1-2006 by check to Alan with a cash discount of 10%. At the beginning, the business owed to Alan was 2,500. So 2,500 is the amount at the beginning of the year the business owed. And then there is a 10% of cash discount. So 2,500 take away. You calculate 10% of 2,500 which gives an answer of 250. So 2,500 250 minus 250 would be 2,250 which will be paid by, by check by the business to Alan. And the discount received amount would be 2,500 into 10% which gives 250. Therefore, the double entry would be Allen account debit 2500, bank account credit 2250, discount received account credit 250. Now, let's post the entry. We need to go to Allen's account onto the debit side. So, let's move into Allen's account. On the debit side, the date is as at 30th, 106. And payment is made by bank and also the business received discounts. So discount received. The date would remain the same. Now let's see what is the balance for the bank. It's 2250. So 2250 and discount received would be 250. Now the same as the previous transaction. You move to the general ledger, bank account, date would be 30th 106 and you would write here Alan TP and the amount paid by check would be 2250. So you credit it by 2250 and then in the discount the date and the information will remain the same. And you would credit the discount by 250. Let's credit it by 250. Uh, the bank opening balance is 15,000, which I have failed to enter before. So let's go to the bank account. And on the debit side, the opening balance has 1 1 2006. And Val brought down the value would be 15,000. Let's write 15,000 in the bank account on the debit side. Now it's time for the balancing of all the accounts. Please make sure to take your calculators. Now let's take the total. Now here in this question you can see on the debit side you get 360, 2250 and 250. The first step is to identify which side is greater. So let's first check the debit side 360 plus 2250 plus 250 gives a total of 282860. So I am just entering it for the moment. This is not the final answer. And on the debit side, we'll see what would be the total. So you add up 2,500 plus 1,800, which gives 4,300. So here, when you observe this, you can see that the credit side is greater. So the balancing should be the larger number should be in the balancing. So let's enter 4,300 here. So from 4,300, you need to deduct all these figures. So calculator please, right, let's type 4300, take away 360, take away 2250, take away 250. 
which gives 1440. So that should be written as 1440, end of month date, as bell carried down. And then over here, the next date, that will be 1206, as bell brought down, and the same value of 1440. So this is the balancing for Alma. Now let's move into Mary's account. Now here you need to make a comparison which side is greater as the previous one. Okay. Now let's see the total on the debit side. Total on the debit side is 1295 and the total of the credit side is 3575. The credit side is greater, so let's change this 3575. Greater number side in the balancing. And then you find the difference between 3575, take away 95, take away 1140, take away 60, which gives 2280. 2280. And then the date would be 31st, 106. And over here as 1206, that brought down. It's the same uh, amount, 2280. Now, let's move into purchaser's returns account. Here there, is, there isn't anything on the debit side. So, you just take the greater number side, 3455. To bring it here 3455 then you write it over here 3455 the date would be 31st 106 as bell brought down and then over here 1206 sorry here it should be carried down and over here it would be bell brought down as 3455 now, balancing of the bank account. Okay, which side is greater? You can clearly see the debit side is greater. Let's bring the greater number side down and over here 15,000. Now, you need to find the difference between 15,000. Take away 1140. Take away 2,250. Which gives? 11,610. 11,610. So this should be written as 31,106 as bell carried down and over here as 1,206 as bell brought down worth of 11,610. Now let's move into discount received account. There isn't any figure on the debit side, only on the credit side. So let's take the total. The total is 310. So write 310 over here. 310 over here. And you would write the end of month date and the information as bell carried down. And over here as 1, 2, 06 as bell brought down and 310. Next, the purchaser's account, debit side is greater. So let's total up the debit side, which gives 19,175. Take the same value over here, and this will be. Which is 19,175 and the end of end of month date as bell carried down and then the next date 1026 as bell brought down. Same value 19,175. Now, let's enter all the closing balances to the trial balance. Uh, Allen account has a credit balance of this much. 
Alan Dickey. So let's put this in the trial balance as Alan TP and he has a credit balance worth of 1140. So you will enter this balance on the credit side because it appears on the credit side of his account. Then Mary TP account and also it goes on the credit side because Mary has a closing balance on the credit side of the account worth of 2280. Followed by that in the general letter purchases returns account. So purchases returns account has a credit balance. So let's enter purchases returns and it has a credit balance worth of 3455. Followed by the bank account which has a closing balance on the debit side. So the bank. So let's go enter bank over here. Worth of 11610. Debit side 11610. Followed by the discount received account which has a credit of 310. Which has a credit of 310. So you enter it on the credit side. Followed by the last purchases account which has a closing balance of 19175. So let's enter the purchases value. And it has a debit balance worth of 19175. 19175. Now we are done with our trial balance. No need to balance the trial balance.